John Wilkes Booth, this is page 58. John finished out the 1859-60 season in Richmond. All the publicity about his having run off to join the militia for John Brown's execution for the events that happened at Harper's Ferry when they took over the arsenal, the abolitionists took over the arsenal. John Brown was convicted for that and it was a death penalty offense and John Wilkes Booth answered the call to make sure he got executed. But his joining the militia increased his fame and popularity. His brother Edwin married soon after that to his wife Mary and they moved to New York. While Edwin was acting in New York and John was performing in the South, uh, John, his reputation enhanced by his success in Richmond, was um, joining the militia, was engaged to go on tour for the first time as a star actor. He would play leading roles at theaters in Columbus, Georgia and Montgomery, Alabama and would receive a share of the night's box office receipts. While Edwin was acting in New York and John was performing in the South, the United States was entering one of the tensest periods in its history. The presidential election of 1860 brought to a head the growing conflict between North and South. The Democratic Party reflecting the conflict split in two. The Southern branch nominated its own candidate for president, John Breckinridge, who stood for states' rights, including the state's right to own slaves. Northern Democrats reacted by nominating as their candidate Stephen Douglas, who argued that the Union must be preserved at all costs, but hoped that a compromise might still be achieved in the slavery issue, saying states that want to own slaves could own slaves. The newly formed Republican Party chose Abraham Lincoln as its candidate. Lincoln, like Douglas, was a strong advocate for the preservation of the Union. He once said, quote, a house divided against itself cannot stand, unquote. Unlike Douglas, however, he considered slavery both unjust and immoral and was utterly opposed to its extension. His position on slavery earned him the support of Northern abolitionists. The support of Northern abolitionists, even though Lincoln was not an abolitionist himself. He was not part of the abolitionist movement, but he, his point of view was the exact same. He thought that slavery should be abolish. But it earned him the enmity of several southern states, including South Carolina, which threatened to withdraw from the Union if he were elected president. These threats were put to the test in November 1860 when Lincoln won the hotly contested four-way election. The fourth candidate was John Bell of the small Constitutional Union Party. Edwin Booth later confessed to a friend that, busy with his own affairs, he hadn't, take the tr hadn't taken the trouble to vote. It's not known whether John Wilkes Booth voted. If he did go to the polls, it certainly didn't cast his ballot for Abraham Lincoln, a man whose views he despised. Besides, John had another more pressing problem to deal with. On October 16th, toward the end of his engagement in Georgia, Booth was accidentally shot in the thigh by his manager, Matthew Canning. when the gun went off. Although it was just a flesh wound, Booth did not return to the stage until October 29th. By then the company had moved to Alabama. The wound was still troubling John when the Montgomery run ended, so he decided to go to his mother's home to recuperate further. Mrs. Booth and Rosalie were now living in Philadelphia near the recent married, recently married daughter, Asia. On December 13th, a Grand Union demonstration attended by more than 10,000 Philadelphians took place in a square near Independence Hall. John may have been among those listening as the speaker after speaker rose to condemn northern extremists for driving the southern states out of the Union. Philadelphia merchants conducted a great deal of trade with the South and they feared their business would suffer if the Union split apart. In the end, the rally's leaders pushed through resolutions urging strict enforcement of the fugitive slave laws under which any slave caught fleeing to the north could be forcibly returned to the south, and the opening up of the federal territories in the Midwest to slavery. 
Whether John attended the rally or not, he no doubt read about it in the Philadelphia papers. Clearly, he was influenced by its resolutions when later in December he drafted a speech expressing his own fervent support for the South. The speech was never finished, let alone delivered, but it reveals the depths of John's feelings. You all feel the fire now raging in the nation's heart, he wrote. It is a fire lighted and fanned by northern fanaticism, a fire which naught but blood and justice can extinguish. I tell you, the abolitionist doctrine is the fire which, if allowed to rage, will consume the house and crush us all beneath its ruins. That's John Wilkes Booth. Booth argued that the rights of Southerners to own slaves and pursue their traditional way of life must be respected. Otherwise, he warned South Carolina and eventually the whole South would secede from the Union. Quote, fierce civil war will follow. And then, what then? Why, God alone can tell the rest, he concluded in a speech he never delivered. But he, he predicted it right. After he had received a five-flesh wound. <laughs>